Hi, everyone. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this uh, Sunday. SSStormChasing.com, MeteorologistJoeChaffee.com, WeatherLongIsland.com, and pretty soon we'll have NYCWeatherNow.com. So uh, just bear that in mind. You can be able to find me anywhere. Okay, Julia, uh, the tropical storm that just will not go away, and of course, uh, it weakened to a depression, then back to a tropical storm, then back to a tropical depression. Well, overnight, uh, thunderstorms have really flared up on the southeastern side, and they actually have persisted. The uh, center, center of circulation looks to be right on the edge of these thunderstorms. There's not very much going on on the northern side, still getting some northerly shear. Uh, and you can see the thunderstorm tops here getting blown away to, from north to south uh, on the uh, eastern side. However, this uh, persisting is uh, something we're going to keep a watch on because it is always possible that this could wind up uh, strengthening again back to a minimal tropical storm. Uh, it's moving uh, generally northward, and uh, it will encounter an environment of less shear probably beginning sometime tonight and into tomorrow, and it's going to approach the Gulf Stream too, so it's not impossible. Uh, I, I, and my interest in this is that actually, I really, really wish, um, for the standpoint of the drought situation, uh, that uh, we could get some of this moisture to move up uh, and get involved with this cold front, and that still apparently is, pro is, is gonna be a long shot, but you know, while it's still out here, I'm just gonna keep an eye on things to see how this all plays out. Uh, now, here's the wider view, and here's our cold front that's coming through, um, moving uh, very slowly eastward. So that's a good thing for this, from the standpoint of rainfall in that um, it'll take a little longer for it to get in. It will take a little longer for it to get out. And while it's here, we can have a prolonged widespread rainfall. The question is how much rain is actually going to get generated out of all of this because if you look at the bright white cloud tops, the first batch, which we kind of knew was going to happen. That's going to go by to our north. So we're watching down here uh, in the uh, Tennessee Valley as we uh, take a look at Brighton here. Uh, we're seeing some uh, moisture develop. This first area that's up this way, you know, that's already pretty much a done deal that was not going to hit the coast anyhow. And the cold front lines up something like that, and then it's pushing eastward. And then, of course, we have Tropical Storm Julia over here uh, that's moving its way. Uh, toward the north. So um, something here with respect to rainfall, how much of this is going to get generated? The models seem to be varying on how robust they want to be uh, going into uh, tonight and tomorrow. The GFS is actually pretty bullish with rainfall. Uh, the NAM is less bullish. And, you know, then, of course, you have, the, if we ever could get this some of this moisture into the equation, uh, but that seems to be a bit of a long shot. Let's look at the uh, radar view, and now you can see what's happening. Here's that first area uh, up uh, to the north and east, and that's just moving along. So areas well north of Route 84 getting into some rain uh, between there and Albany, and also in northeastern Pennsylvania getting, <clears throat> getting into some rain with this first batch. And then we have a bit of a gap, and then we have the second area. This is the one that will probably uh, be coming in for uh, tonight. So we'll see uh, how that plays out. And here's our weather front just lying out just to our west there. So let's look at what the models are doing and, and, and seeing uh, how this plays out from that standpoint. And let me just back this up a little bit and, you know, let me put myself in a place where I'm a little less bothersome. In fact, I'll just shift it a little further to the east. Okay, so there we go. So here we have um, the GFS model, and you can see that first area of range just kind of disintegrates, but then gets re-enhanced as we go into this evening. So this is uh, 8 o'clock this evening, and then went through the overnight. There's a fair amount of rain or showers. Looks like the heaviest is uh, to our west, the, is west and north of the coast. And, and by the way, here's Julia, uh, which moves along to the northwest and north to the Carolina coast and kind of straddles in there. And you start to see Monday afternoon, you've got rain up from New England down across uh, Long Island, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, southeastern New York, Connecticut, and then continuing southward into um, Virginia and North Carolina with uh, Julia on the coast. And getting a little bit of rain enhancement into Monday night here from 
the uh, whatever that you know whatever we have left of Julia at this point, but it never really lifts up north. It just kind of sits there, and then gradually what happens is we still have some lingering showers here into Tuesday. The GFS would want to have it lingering into Tuesday afternoon, uh, but then after that it drops off. So it does show that we're getting a little bit more rain and a longer duration event than what it was showing yesterday, and I think. Uh, tropical Depression Julia or possibly Tropical Storm Julia uh, will have, um, you know, maybe the model is picking up that some of that tropical moisture is getting enhanced on the northern edge of this. So uh, I, I want to pay attention uh, to, to, to a situation like this when there's tropical moisture involved. You, you never can tell. I mean, I mean, the bottom line is it never really, it barely gets uh, that moisture up this far north, but it's making a little bit of progress. And while it's still out there, uh, you just want to keep keep an, a, a close watch. Let's look at the rainfall totals uh, from the GFS model, which actually aren't too bad. Um, I, I would have liked to see a little bit more, but you know, basically, you can see the heavier rains from Julia really are down uh, off coastal North Carolina and offshore. And you know, there's some two plus inch amounts that extend up through New Jersey toward. Uh, just touching the south shore of Long Island, also into parts of the Hudson Valley in northeastern Pennsylvania. It looks like a general one to two inch rainfall on this model, which, uh, hey, we'll take it, okay? So um, we'll see how this plays out as we go through the day. Um, I, will, I wanna take a look, by the way, let's take a look now at the Tropical Storm Carl, okay? So we'll go do that um, because uh, it's going to uh, depend on how strong Carl gets um, down the road as far as how far west Carl is going to wind up. So let's back this up here. Uh, we are into Wednesday on this, so I'm going to go to the beginning. Now, the GFS keeps Carl as a relatively weak system, and, as, and here it is. It's right here. And in fact, you know, this is uh, through Wednesday. Julia is still there in some fashion, uh, and it moves westward actually gets to just to the west of 70 west as a as a depression and and moves even further west it almost gets to about 72 or 3 west before it begins to respond to the dropping westerly winds in eastern canada at which point it turns east northeastward and northeastward and passes closer to bermuda meanwhile we have a, a fairly strong cold front that approaches here for a week from monday when that, and that comes on through, and there's some um, much cooler air behind this one. If this model is correct, it actually has a pretty decent shot of cold air coming in uh, for this time of year, anyway, uh, to finish off the month and to start up the start off the month of October. It also, you know, again now we start to get into squirrel land. It develops something in the eastern Caribbean that it eventually wants to turn north, um, you know, westward and then northward. But who knows if that's even real? But the bottom line at least for Carl, is if it remains a weak system, it's going to get for a little further west. I mean, ultimately, I think it turns, but, um, you know, instead of turning at 67 or 8, it might turn at 72 or 3. I mean, big deal. But uh, the other thing is when you look at the European, and here's Carl on the European, the European continues to make this into a hurricane, and you can see that the European actually turns it faster and turns it, takes it right over Bermuda and then northeastward. So what we have in terms of a tropical storm uh, is going to be the determining factor. If it's something that's on the weak side, it will wind up getting further west before it turns. If it's on the strong side, it'll turn sooner because it'll start to react to those westerly winds aloft um, a little faster. And you can see on the upper air here, it's going to be moving westward as long as it's under that upper ridge. <clears throat> but then as these westerlies begin to strengthen late this week across the northeast, and across uh, eastern Canada and out into the Atlantic, Carl responds by getting picked up, and this deep trough just swings around and really just kicks it out uh, into the open ocean. And then you have this next uh, deep trough that's going to be um, bringing in some uh, cooler air to finish off the month of September. So um, we'll see what happens as we go through the day. The Giants should be okay today uh, as far as the game goes, other than a press passing brief shower. I don't foresee any problems. And uh, by the way, a reminder, Hicksville Library, Wednesday, October 5th at 7.15 p.m., uh, Hicksville, New York. Uh, there's a, a story and link on my website, uh, meteorologistjochaffee.com. It's free, no registration required.
just uh, click on the link and uh, you'll get the directions. ssstormchasing.com, weatherlongisland.com uh, for all your weather forecasting needs.